So you guys all keep asking for me to do this loft tour. I'm moving out in two weeks, it's kind of now or never, so let's do it. Come on in. First off, let's get the stats out of the way. It's roughly a 2,000 square foot loft. And it used to be two one bedrooms that were stacked on top of each other. And the original buyer back in the 90s sometime combined these two units to make a one single large two level unit with a small little third level that leads out onto the roof deck. I bought this place back in 2015 and this place was my absolute dream home. You might be asking, Am I kind of giving up on my dream by, by moving out? We'll come back to that. But first, let's dive into this tour. This is sort of the, the, the foyer, the foyer, if you will. Moving over this way, we've got the Star Wars table, which is one of my favorite projects. Over there, you've got the Lego guitar. I'm sounding like a broken record here. One of my favorite projects. And this room in general, it's, it's kind of an entryway, but it's big enough. This actually kind of flips out and makes a little queen size bed. So when I have guests or family over, we can kind of use this area as a, a third bedroom here. But might as well just open this up a little bit. Oh, hey buddy. Oh yeah. There's the true owner. Say hi, say hi to the YouTubes, buddy. Yeah. Had this guy for almost 17 years now. He's getting to be old on me. So as we're moving down this hallway, we've got a guest bathroom over there, but uh, it's the only bathroom I haven't renovated. It's a little quirky. We'll come back to it later. Into the living room now. This is 100% open concept living. The place is wide open. You've got kitchen, dining room, living area all together. I know that opinions vary on open concept living, but I'm personally a big fan. So this kitchen was actually renovated when I moved in. I think whoever did it, a couple owners before me, did a really great job because it still looks like a pretty modern kitchen. I know it's not the white that everybody loves, but it really goes with the industrial feel of the place. So I did do a couple things. I added this stainless steel vent above the oven. I don't know why they didn't have a vent. Maybe they just didn't really cook. I also added these sort of black and copper pendant lights and that was it. And yes, there is a mirror backsplash. It is a nightmare to keep clean when you've got a sink right by it. I would never do that again. Now over to the open living area. So when I moved into this place, it was super dated. You know, early 2000s stucco white textured wall, sort of gray granite surround with the big beefy crown molding hearth that just didn't fit the feel of the place. I ripped all that out. I used the same uh, concrete feather finish that I used in the bathroom at the new place. Added in sort of the wood backdrop cut out for the TV. I did a concrete hearth made out of GFRC. While I didn't film that for YouTube, there are a bunch of YouTube projects in here. Over here in this corner, you've got the concrete wing table. This one needs a new home. I've I'm, I'm got like four coffee tables in this place and I'm about to move. So of all the projects that I've kept here, this one, the Arctic erosion table is probably my favorite thing that I've ever made because to me at least, I hope it's closer to actual art than, than anything else. I like to say sometimes I'm like a wannabe artist, but this one I'm pretty happy with. Over here, I've got these uh, succulent planters that I made last year, by the way, Never buy a white couch. Terrible, terrible idea. We'll be doing a new couch. Maybe I'll make one at the new place. Gotta move the camera bag. We're playing like musical bags. Trying to keep them off camera as much as we can. So I built all the cabinets here. This is actually kind of interesting. This is the same uh, concrete feather finish that I used in the bathroom at the new place. I put it on basically just plywood to make these cabinet doors. And if you wanna make it look like you've got a concrete cabinet, you can that way. So I know that there's a couple schools of thoughts about whether people like a beverage fridge in the living room or not. I personally love having a fridge just for all my sort of adult beverages and sodas, a little LaCroix here and there, not sponsored, but love them. And actually, this is my tour. So I think I'm allowed to have a little beer here. Can I do this on the YouTube? I think I can. Hmm. So I know I'm gonna get questions about this live edge table. 
I bought this before I started making things. My buddy Fadil built it. Uh, he watches some of these videos. So if you're watching Fadil, awesome job. Now I guess let's check out the upstairs bathroom. This one's a little quirky. Now, yeah, I'll just sit on the throne and have a little chat. So this bathroom is definitely a little bit odd. It feels like it'd be more a Hamptons beachy theme than it is at an industrial loft. If I were staying here longer, I'd probably redo it and, and get rid of the, the beachy theme in here. So my favorite part of this place is 100% the roof deck. But before we get to that, let's head downstairs and check out the two bedrooms down there. So this is the guest bedroom. When I moved in, I installed this Murphy bed here. I'm a big fan of Murphy beds. I'm definitely gonna have them in the guest bedrooms at the new place, and at least one of them, maybe two of them. And I've got some kind of cool ideas I'm toying with for those, so stay tuned. This room, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time in. Everybody's got a spot where they just kind of, they put everything that they don't have any other place for, and that's this room for me. This door right here leads to the guest bathroom. This is peel and stick wood. I took the existing door, bought some aluminum trim, put the wood on there and basically completely made it over. And this guest bathroom is all new. I added this in when I, uh, when I moved in. There's some pretty cool things I did in here. I love this open shower. It's a curbless shower, so you can kind of just walk right in. There's no curb. Everything slopes down. You've got this linear drain across the floor, so all the water kind of flows into that. I should have closed these off so it was a little more attractive, but we've got side-by-side -side washer and dryer, which in the city of Chicago is a huge luxury. Added those into this guest bathroom right here. Over here, I've got a vanity that I made. I took an old mirror that was here, built this solid walnut frame around it, solid walnut vanity with a live edge slab backsplash and then have a white concrete countertop here. This is a little bit more rustic maybe than what I'm gonna go with at the new place, but definitely gonna be doing some concrete countertops. When we get to the master bathroom, you'll see, uh, you'll see what those are gonna look like. Speaking of that, why don't we go over and look at that? And I gotta tidy up a little bit, hold on. Oh, hey there. Just sitting here, mowing my friend's lawn, which, yeah, I totally do that all the time. Not. And it is a perfect time to tell you about this video's sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and hygiene. Their Perfect Package 3.0 kit, which includes their lawnmower 3.0 trimmer, is the best way for any man to mow their lawn and keep their house looking dapper. So why should you care about mowing your lawn? Scientific studies have shown that four out of five women prefer a man whose house has a well-manicured lawn. So obviously, mowing your lawn, well, it makes your house way more attractive. But did you know that mowing your lawn can also make your house look bigger? That's right. And if you've been scared to try mowing your own lawn because you're worried you'll hit the ground, well, don't be. The Lawn Mower 3.0 trimmer includes Manscaped's advanced skin-safe technology, which ensures there's no ground damage when you're mowing your lawn. The Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer is waterproof, cordless, rechargeable, and TSA friendly. Right now, you can get 20% off the Perfect Package 3.0 by using the code MEDUSTRIAL at manscaped.com. Just use the link in the description below. For a limited time, you get two free gifts with the Perfect Package 3.0, the Shed Travel Bag, and Manscaped's Boxer Briefs. So guys, do yourself a favor and go check out manscaped.com to transform that overgrown jungle into a manicured mansion. Much love to Manscaped for supporting this channel, uh, letting me have a little fun with this ad read. And now, let's get back to the video. It's clean now, come on in. Semi-clean. So first off, you gotta pardon that I have, uh, this is the donation pile. I'm trying to, trying to do the thing when I'm moving of actually purging stuff I don't need. A whole bunch of business clothes that Definitely don't need anymore. I refuse to wear a suit. So over here, I made this whole thing with all the built-in cabinets. If you haven't checked that video out, definitely do. I probably won't do something quite this extensive at the new place. One, because it's massive, and two, uh, it just took so much time to do these built-in cabinets. Do love the live edge sled above the headboard as sort of wall art. I will 100% take that. So over here, we got, well, 
Picture mom and dad. Love you guys. This is the, uh, the skateboard wood speaker. Made the whole front of the speaker out of skateboard wood with uh, skateboard trucks, even uh, skateboard grip tape and skateboard wheels as the uh, sort of bumpers that it sits on. That one was a YouTube video. Sound wave dresser where I CNC this sort of sound wave into it. That was also a YouTube video. Made that sort of maple and black to match the bed. Oh, one other thing. Now, if you guys haven't seen this video, if you have, bear with me, but it's cool enough you should watch again. So this is a concrete countertop. And as far as I know, this is the world's only hidden TV inside of a concrete countertop. I didn't look that hard, but I'm just gonna guess. World's only, we're gonna go with it. World's only, world's first TV inside a concrete countertop. Over here, let's talk about this fireplace. So when I moved in, this thing was a 90s masterpiece. And my 90s masterpiece, I mean putrid and hideous. It was like a painted gold, but it wasn't like any gold. It was a gold of color, because if it were, that's what color it was. And it had this smashed granite hearth surround and mantle that was just weird. It was like pieces of stacked granite that were smashed and jagged edges. It's trying to be some sort of weird 90s avant-garde thing. It was terrible. So that had to go. I put in these reclaimed walls that match the rest of the sort of white reclaimed wood that's in the place. Added a, a marble hearth to it to try and class it up a little bit. Let's check out probably the coolest room in here, the master bathroom. Also has a pocket door leading to it. So when I moved in, it was weird. It was totally masculine, like the most masculine bathroom with zero storage you could imagine. The little pedestal sink. I basically extended it out to add this whole space when you walked in. So you now have room for a double vanity, which I did this concrete sink myself. Bamboo cabinets and countertops. I think you might see something pretty close to this, this color scheme and this sort of textures and materials in the master bathroom of the new place. I'm a pretty big fan of how, you know, predominantly white, little touches of black for some contrast with the warm wood tones of some teak and bamboo, and a little foliage. One other thing I did here, which I will not do at the new place, is put an electric fireplace in the bathroom. It's pretty cool, but I wouldn't spend money on it again, nor can I afford to spend money on it again. We're back upstairs. You obviously probably noticed there's this massive sort of three-story steel staircase, it's cool and all, but I would never do that again because it just eats up so much floor real estate. And before we go up and check out the roof deck, I know people are going to ask me why I'm selling this place. I mean, obviously I'm buying the new building, but, but why is it that I'm, that I'm giving this up? Why did I want to do that? So that could take a minute, let's sit down. Just to fill you guys in, I actually sold this back in May. I did a sale leaseback agreement. So I'm now actually a tenant leasing from the new owner. I have to be out by the end of the month. I'm gonna move into an Airbnb near the new building. See, he doesn't like the new building. He'll get used to it. The plan is to get at least one guest bedroom and a guest bathroom up and running so that I can move in, use those while I finish out and then take a little more of my time to finish out the rest of the space in the master bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, et cetera. Now, the new place is in a cool neighborhood, but it's definitely not the hot area. I mean, this place is probably the hottest location in Chicago, right next to Soho House. I'm, I'm gonna miss it. But quite honestly, I couldn't afford to live here and do what I wanted to do with my life. I was spending so much time at work and at the office that I really never had time to be here and enjoy this place it was keeping me away from family and friends. Overall, my quality of life wasn't enough to justify trying to keep earn that amount of money that I needed to make to pay the mortgage on this place. The main thing about money, bud, it makes you do things you don't want to do. So yes, at one point, this was my dream loft, but it was definitely a bit of a, and I admit this now, a materialistic dream. It was something that I thought I wanted because it, 
was a cool factor. Life is more than just things. It's everything that goes into your day-to-day -day experience. And if the quest to obtain those things makes you unhappy, then those things just aren't worth it. And that's why I decided to, to leave my job as an attorney to go full-time YouTube, making things, buy the new building, try to live life, like I said before, live it on my terms. So why am I sharing all this? I, I guess it's because for me, it was, it was a little bit difficult to, to leave this place. And, and this was probably the biggest holdup that I had in leaving my job. It had kind of become, now that I can look back, part of my self-identity. Being the guy that had the cool place and the cool neighborhood was who I thought I was. And to admit that that wasn't making me happy and that I needed to sort of reprioritize things. It was difficult to do. Maybe there's other people out there who are, are in some similar situations where maybe they're chasing something that's a little more material. Sometimes you have to take steps back, but they don't really end up being steps back. Yes, I'm gonna make less money doing YouTube, but you know, the cliche of money can't buy happiness, absolutely true. At any rate, I will get off the soapbox. I'm super stoked about the new building and this place still is super cool, so I definitely wanna share the rooftop with you before I move out. Let's go check it out. First up, outdoor kitchen I built. So this is not GFRC, this is solid, like 750 pounds of concrete countertop over here. Really cool little barbecue island over there. I learned a lesson, that feather finish stuff that I used in the walls and the bathroom, I tried using it on top of these countertops because I didn't like the original color. It's a terrible choice for outdoors. It cracks, it stains, normal concrete countertops. We'll be doing some in the kitchen in the new place. Way better, that's the way to go. So over here, Woo, got the, got the sunset in my eyes right here. I've got a 120 inch outdoor movie theater screen. We'll pull up here. We did like Game of Thrones finale, all kinds of fun stuff. It's great to have kind of like movies on the roof at night. Definitely, definitely gonna be building like an outdoor projector screen into the roof deck at the new place when we, when we tackle that project. And then we've got what, what sold me, which is the skyline view. You know you're from Chicago if you call it the Sears Tower. We still call it that even though Sears doesn't exist anymore. It's never the Willis Tower. I don't even know if it's that anymore, but whatever. Always a Sears Tower to us Chicagoans. Over here, got a little piece of street art. And this is not, it's not an elephant. The artist would be really angry if you said elephant. It's a mastodon, prehistoric ancestor to the elephant. You can tell I love street art. Gonna be doing a bunch of street art in the garage at the new place. So over here, I built out this sort of concrete top with the exposed glass aggregate fire pit. Fire pit is also a must in Chicago because it extends the, the amount of time that you can use uh, your outdoor space by like a month on each end. And we don't get a whole lot of warm weather in Chicago. So definitely gonna have some nice fire pit or fire pits at the rooftop in the new place, which by the way, speaking of, a lot of people have been asking about what I'm gonna do there. I almost envision it as being a whole series after I finish the interior of the building to build out the entire roof deck in a sort of a big outdoor living area up top there. It should be a lot of fun. All right, y'all, this is, this is it. I am all out of here. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't uh, a little bit bittersweet. This place was really cool, um, but we are on to bigger and better things. If you're just finding this loft tour, make sure you subscribe and bell. Go check out the abandoned building reno playlist. Follow along there. Love to have you as part of this community. That is it for this time, and I will see you next time at the new building.